and we try so hard to be the perfect parents we really do but every so often we do slip up and sometimes we realize but often we don't so today on and mum pedia pro 3 coffee group we are talking common parenting mistakes with yvonne godfrey and john cowan good morning to you both good morning mel beautiful to have you in the studio let's start with you yvonne um, you work with children mm -hmm. from all backgrounds what mistakes do you see their parents making i think one of the big ones is that parents believe their role is to make their kids happy and to minimise their problems. Unfortunately, if they have that stance, it leads to not wanting to make unpopular decisions. And of course, this gives way much too much power back to the children. And I think it's great for kids to give input and their opinions, but if you reduce your family down to a democracy and don't lead it, then that does not bring happiness and in fact can make your kids feel insecure. This is all ringing very true. John, what about you? What mistakes do you see parents making? Well, the really good thing is that you can actually make lots and lots of mistakes and it usually doesn't matter. As long as your children feel safe and loved, you've probably already got your pass mark as a parent. But for myself, the, probably the biggest mistake I made was thinking that anger would mm. do something positive. But anger never seemed to work for me. And my kids very seldom ever came back to me afterwards and said, oh, thank you very much for that telling off, Dad. That was just what we needed to see the light and get back on track. Doesn't happen. It's funny that, isn't it? Because I don't think that works for anyone. No. Although sometimes it's a little bit hard to avoid. Oh, yeah. Um, Yvonne, the next mistake you, you want to talk about is parents putting the kids before their marriage. Mm. Look, I think the greatest gift that parents can give their children is a strong, united marriage. Mm. Uh, you're, you're you hear mothers say, my kids are my world, but they're only part of their world. What about that gorgeous spouse? Mm. He or she was around before you had your children and they're going to be around way after the children are gone. So I think it's smart and wise to make sure that you do honour each other and it stops the children dividing and ruling too. Well, that's interesting because usually you do hear you've got to put your children first at all, all, for all measures, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Mm. yeah. He's saying something quite different. Interesting yeah. though. John, uh, what are some of your thoughts on the spouse versus the well, kids Well, sadly thing? it's not hard to imagine a scenario where perhaps you might have to make that hard choice. If there's drugs or violence involved, you may, may, may need to choose your children's welfare ahead of your relationship yeah. with your partner. But in general, I think uh, it's a fantastic mm -hmm. gift to give your kids if you can let them know that the centre of his home isn't you, kid, it's the love between mm -hmm. mum and dad. Yeah. And so when you arrive home and you go, g'day kids, where's mum? Where's dad? Mm -hmm. And you go and debrief of each other and kiss and hug and if you're getting eye rolling and your teenagers going, oh, get a room, then that's about the right <laughs> level of affection. And uh, yeah, it really makes well, what good things What happens if there's not that love between mum and dad? Things could get awkward. It could, and mm -hmm. it does impact children. That's the thing to bear in mind. And mm -hmm. so working on your relationship together can be a really, really potent mm. parenting tool to help things happen. Mm. And it's interesting that you talk too about the uh, about the dividing and conquer because I think everyone who's got children has had that situation mm -hmm. where their children have tried to divide their parents, asked you one question, then asked on and asked did their father the other one. Yeah. But I remember doing that as a child as well. It's quite a common practice. Isn't yeah. It's human nature. Yeah, mm. it is. So you have to try and nip that one in the bud. Yeah, I reckon the best thing is just to default to the whoever's made the rule first and mm. just say, oh, has mum already said that? Oh, okay, just do what mum says mm. at the moment. I'm going to mm. have a talk with her because I can't understand why she would well, have said that but I know she's got a good reason. She's got yeah, reasons. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she's just right. grumpy with you. That could yeah. be the reason. Uh, Yvonne, <laughs> sometimes it's something that you've noticed is parents discussing one child's flaws in front of the siblings. Uh, how does that affect children? <clears throat> It's very unnerving for children. Uh, it's very tempting to negatively sound off about one of your children to the other child, whether mm. it's because you're trying to get them to come on your side, which is a little bit immature really, but it does divide. And look, we all love to be the favoured one until we're out of favour. So it's not good to compare your children one to the other mm. because that can very quickly turn against you for sure. And as a child, how powerful to know something about one of, your one of your siblings, but then what are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. It's too much responsibility. Uh, you could end up using it as a weapon against the other child. So, you know, we all know that if someone's talking badly about someone, eventually it'll be, it'll be our turn as well. So it's not a good strategy. That's mm -hmm. true. We, as, as grown-ups, do have to be the grown-ups, don't mm -hmm. we, when That's we're right. parenting? Yeah. Uh, John, you agree it's healthier to keep your complaints about your kids away from their ears? I think so, but... If one of the children is being unpleasant and bullying, then the sibling knows about it and is usually the victim of it. And kids will feel very, very uh, hurt if you don't side with them against this bully. So uh, they have a very black and white sense of justice and they want you to side with them. Yeah. And you can sympathise, you can agree, but you can bring an adult perspective as well. You mm. can say, gee, 
No, Tom shouldn't have done that. I'm mm. going to get him to sort that out as soon as he's cooled down a bit. But he doesn't normally act like that. I wonder what's going on. So you can add that extra mm. adult perspective that there could be some reason behind this that we need mm. to get to the bottom of. What about if parents have separated? How do you, how do you have that united front in that situation? It's very tricky, but even though you've probably disagreed on all sorts of things, one of the things mm. you probably will agree on that you, is that you want the best for the children. Mm. And you might have slightly different approaches to that, but it at least is, a, is that common ground that you can start your negotiations on. So Yvonne, what about you? What are your thoughts? It's really hard when parents are separated because their own pain often outweighs their responsibility factor towards their children. Mm. Uh, but if they can come to some sort of truce, Mm -hmm. for the sake of the children, I think it's really important because it's really easy to download on a child the negativities about the mother or the father, likewise with the children mm -hmm. as we were discussing before, and that is just totally out of bounds. It doesn't help, it doesn't grow relationships and literally destroys the little you've got left after a divorce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sound advice from both of you. Always great to have a chat, Yvonne and John. Thank you so much. You. Coffee Group is brought to you by Anne Mum Pedia Pro 3, the only toddler milk with no added sugars. And if you have any worries that you'd like addressed by our parents, panel message us on the cafe Facebook page one contributor will win this very cool ebook from Anne Mum and congratulations to Good this week's winner now. your long black with soy is coming right up oh that's Jesse tell me what my coffee order is you can put your own voice into it uh, this week's winner is Cherie Burns congrats your ebook is on its way